Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. Um, I'm on here a lot earlier today than I have been the past few days because tonight we're having company over and we're going to play cards and have dinner. And so I wanted to make sure and come live with you guys a little earlier because I knew I wouldn't have time to later. And I see that I've already gotten paint on my pants, so there's that. So you guys say hi to me as you come in. I know a lot of you are probably at work and you're gonna have to watch this on replay, which that's totally cool. I need to keep this out because I forgot. Um, I'm doing a door hanger that's uh, a heart with, I'm gonna put like grandkids' names or something like that on the little hearts. And I forgot to look up um, the message that the lady had sent me about what name she wanted on there. So let me get that pulled up so I don't forget what names and misspell things. Y'all say hi to me as you come in. Miranda said, I just ordered the brushes that I recommended the other night. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Gail. Hey, Angela. How are you guys? Let me find this message. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, I got to keep that handy so I can look at what names to write on this door hanger in a moment. Hi, Dana. Hi, Amy. Hey, Teresa. Um, okay. Let's see, I'm going to be using two sizes of these Filbert brushes. That one's probably too big. Um, however big you think you want the width of your lettering to be, probably go down one size from that. This is looking about right. I've got like a million sizes in here. So bear with me a second while I pull out the kind I need. This should work. Okay, so I've got two different sizes. These are filbert tipped. One is a size six and one is a size one. Uh, these are not linked on my website, but there are some that are very similar. If you wanna find those, it's southern, southernadornmentsdecor.com. Click on resource list. But these are very similar. They are linked. They're crafter's choice. Um, the reason I'm not using these is because I've told you guys before, these are worn out. I just need to like throw them away. I need to order some new ones. You practiced last night on cardboard and it's getting there. Don't give up, Angela, you'll get there. Hey, Anita. So I'm just gonna squirt out some black paint and then I'm gonna angle my camera down when I get ready to start painting so that you guys can see and hopefully that will um, let you guys see better. And maybe I can like sit, whoops. Maybe I can kind of sit sideways so that you guys aren't looking at the lettering upside down, but I will have to flip um, my camera so that the words aren't backwards for you all. So let me get that done. Um, I am still taking signups for my Painters Clubhouse group. If you are interested, I will be teaching hand lettering in the Painters Clubhouse. We are at 274 members, I think. I checked a little while ago, and that's what we were up to. So that is amazing. I am, like, so super pumped. Hey, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, hey, girl designs. Highway House, how are you? Filbert is the type of brush. Yes, the filbert means that it's not rounded and it's not square. It's just kind of like a little oval shape up at the top. That's what a filbert brush is. Okay, let's angle you down here so you can see what I'm up to. Hey, Candace, I may not be able to see your comments very well. I'm going to try to look at the camera from upside down here. But we will see. Um, I need a new tripod, guys. I know I've said that before. I need to just order it. Okay. Do you think that's going to work? Is it weird? Okay. And we're writing blessed in the middle right here. So I'm going to use the larger brush that is the size six. And I've got my little um, handy dandy, uh, what do you call these? Egg cartons. Yeah, egg carton. And I've got my black paint in there. And I've written the word blessed. That's another word you can practice. Like if you're wanting, oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, that's another word that if you want to get better at writing certain words, I talked about the word welcome the other night and how that's a great word to practice. The word blessed in cursive is another one that you should really practice because people put those on crosses and mason jars and these hearts, a lot of different things. So that's something that if you do paint parties or if you plan on selling door hangers, you'll probably write, paint blessed a lot. So that's another one to practice writing. And I just realized that, like, the, not only is the lettering flipped and upside down, but everything. Let me see if I can help y'all out here. Does that work? No. This is all awkward. I don't know. Every which way I flip it, it looks wrong. So, let me just, here. I know what. I don't know why I decided to put the tripod on the table when I normally put it up here anyway. So, it may be upside down, but 
Here, that's better. We'll just sit like we usually do. I don't know why I tried to change things up this time. <laughs> hey, Carol. Hey, Amy. Okay. Uh, and then when I go to start my L, I start right here in the middle of the letter B and swoop up and then straight down. And then I thicken up this, this stroke right here. And then go up and do your E. And I know I probably make this seem effortless, but it's because I've written this word so many times exactly this way that I don't really have to think about the shapes of the letters anymore like I used to. So if you're interested in the Painters Clubhouse and you haven't joined yet, you've only got three days after today left. Wait, is it three days? No, four days. You've got until Monday to sign up. Um, if you want the link, comment me and it will send you a direct message to sign up. Um, every day I've been trying to go live on here so you guys don't forget because I know some people are like, wait until they get paid or whatever. It's $27 a month and you will get two templates each month. Uh, for door hangers, and I'm so proud of the women in our group. There are several of them that have started cutting door hangers for themselves for the very first time, and they've been posting the pictures of how it's turned out, and um, they are just doing awesome. So you'll be getting two door hanger templates each month, and we will be teaching you, we'll give you two tutorials to go along with those. The first tutorial is going to be next Monday, April the 9th, so that's why the, the group is closing on that day. So if you want to be notified, type me in the comments and it will send you a link. Okay, so I've got blessed all written out here. And then, um, let me drop that in the water. I'm going to switch to the size one. It's much, much skinnier. You really have no idea. Thank you for doing this. I don't know. I, didn't, I misunderstood what you said. Howie House Custom said, did you already do a jigsaw tutorial? Not yet. I've got to get my husband to videotape me doing it. And he's not home uh, during the day. He goes to school up at uh, the college. And so I need to wait till, uh, and maybe this weekend we can do it because we'll have to like do it during the day when you guys can see, because I don't have an indoor space to do this. Okay. The names I'm supposed to put on here. Let me look at my notes. Where did it go? It, well, yeah. Oh, here we are. Kane is one, K-A-N-E. So with this little bitty um, brush, I'm just going to do regular print and do a K. And it allows you to write much skinnier so that you can fit long names and stuff like that on these little hearts. Because if I used that other big brush, it, it would have been big and chunky and wouldn't be nice and small and neat like this. The, to me, these little bitty brushes, like this filbert tip that's a size one, almost right like a pencil or a paint pen. Like, that's about the size of, of the lettering. Okay, the next name is Grady. I'm also going to add some accents to this when we're done so it's not so flat. Like, I'll add some black outlines and things. I apologize if I'm missing any of your questions. Uh, Melanie, it's a, it's kind of a, a combination between a flat tip and a round. It's called a filbert tip. Um, can you see that? It's kind of rounded. It's hard to show you on camera, but it's called a filbert. F-I-L-B-E-R-T. <laughs> I had to really think about that. It's hard to spell and then spell a name also on here and not misspell something. But this to me is the easiest type of lettering to do because these little brushes do such a good job. Okay, Ada is the next one, if I'm saying her name correctly. I'm going to try to go back and read your comments in just a few moments when I get done with this so that I don't miss any, any questions. If you guys do have questions about the Painters Clubhouse and maybe you're sitting on the fence and you just need something kind of clarified, feel free to send me a private message. I've been answering questions like that uh, every day this week. Emily says, you may have already addressed it, but are these brushes on your resource list? Not these exact ones, but I have some very similar. The Crafter's Choice ones are linked on there. Um, I'll see if I can get these linked on there as well before too long because they come in a pack with, I don't know how many brushes there were. There was like 10 of them or more, and they were all different sizes, and I really like them so far. But I wanted to try them out before I put them on the resource list to make sure that I really liked them because I really do not put anything on there that I haven't tried or recommend myself. That I, the, you know, that I can't vouch for. 
H-A-A-Y-C-E. And if you notice, I'm like re-dipping my brush after almost every letter. That's why I'm able to paint these letters so smoothly is I have plenty of paint every time on my brush. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch to a round tipped brush. Hey Diane, hope you had a good day at work. And this is, I don't even know what size this is. If I had to guess, I'd say like a size six. But you see how it's a round tipped brush, but it's much thicker. This will pick up a lot of paint and I'll be able to do these little outlines. Like usually I do a couple little dots and then a wiggly line. And then I can do it up here too. The wiggly line is much easier if you guys are starting out, if you're a beginner. You might want to start by doing this kind of trim work around a lot of your door hangers. Um, it just really helps make it look polished and finished when you're done. And by doing it wiggly, it's really, um, it doesn't have to be perfect and it can look whimsical. Hi, Lauren from Louisiana. <laughs> hey, Lisa. And so I'm doing the same wiggly line around the edge of these hearts because whenever I did the stenciling around the edge of the hearts, if you look real closely, that stenciling is not perfect. Like look at the edge of that heart right there. So when I do these wiggly lines, you won't even notice all of that. And this polka dot kind of went over the edge. So all of these little accents and wiggly lines distract from any little imperfections in the design. My kids are getting rowdy in there, it sounds like. I just finished making a low-carb cheesecake. I hope it turns out well. It's got like cream cheese and heavy whipping cream and sugar-free white chocolate jello mix. The recipe called for sugar, no, not jello, pudding mix. The recipe called for sugar-free lemon jello but we couldn't find any of that at Walmart. So I went with plan B and got white chocolate pudding, which I think is probably gonna be better tasting anyways. Okay, so I've got all the accents on here and all it needs is a bow. There you have it. Angela, no, I don't homeschool. They're on spring break right now. Ah, let me adjust this back up for you guys. Okay, let me go back. You need that recipe. Well, Janet, um, if you look it up on Pinterest, just type in low carb, lemon cheesecake and I used the recipe exactly as it called for except instead of doing sugar-free lemon jello I substituted sugar-free white chocolate pudding so I'll let you know how it turns out Becky says how do you determine which brush for which job filvert versus round um let me show you this one down here this lettering right here the the name uh when I feel like I have to be more precise with the cursive, if it's gonna be, like I couldn't use that big filbert brush to do this lettering because it would have been too chunky and it, would have, it wouldn't have been delicate looking. So if I want it to be delicate looking um, and kind of thin, thinner brush strokes, I choose a round brush. If I want it to be a little thicker, like I did with this blessed, I use the filbert brush. If I, um, and I can do this type of lettering with the round tipped brush if I wanted to, I just, I feel like I have a little bit more control with the filbert brush. Cause if you've noticed the round tipped brushes, the brush, uh, the bristle length is longer. And so sometimes you have less control over the strokes you're making. Thank you, Carol. But if you're using one of these little filbert tipped brushes, like the length of the bristles is not as long and they're a little bit less bendy. And so when you're making your brush strokes, you'll have more control over where you're putting the paint. I hope that makes sense. I try to word things sometimes or describe it and it doesn't make sense. Type of paints. All of the paints I use are this Apple Barrel brand that you can get at Walmart. And I like the matte, matte acrylic paint. Um, I always spray all of my door hangers with a clear coat sealer whenever I'm done. I use Rust-Oleum lacquer. I believe it is linked on the resource list, but I'm not sure. Sherry, would you mind showing us the back of the fawn? You wanted to, oh, I don't think that one has the, oh, it does have the stamp on it. There's my stamp. I got it at Zazzle.com, Z-A-Z-Z-L-E.com. I just designed it myself like in a paint, like in a, a publishing program. Like I designed all the lettering myself and just saved it as a JPEG and uploaded it to Zazzle and created it. The only problem is the stamp is huge. Like look at it compared to the size of my face. That thing is huge. So the problem we found was is we had to special order 
a stamp pad because this is the stamp pad that came with it. So you can imagine how many times I had to blot that ink all over it to do every stamp. So let me show you something else. Walmart.com had this to order and it's a ginormous stamp pad. So if you get one of these great big stamps, I believe this stamp is like four inches by five inches or something. If you get one of these, you're gonna have to custom order a ginormous stamp pad. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Renee. See you later. Uh, okay, let me scroll back because I'm sure I missed some questions earlier when I was painting. Everybody's saying hi. Let me go down. I scrolled a little too fast. <laughs> Are you already doing a jigsaw tutorial? I think I said that. We're going to try to get that jigsaw tutorial recorded this weekend so it will be ready for everybody. How do you keep a thick line? My always seems paint to run out of the brush. I keep re-dipping after like every letter. Oops. Um, Ashley said I made that cut out with the heart, but it doesn't look as good. You're going to just keep trying, girl. You need to get it ready before Mother's Day. That's right. Will the tutorials be available if not live? Yes, everything will be available. Like if, if we put a tutorial on the Facebook page, eventually it will be moved over to the website for you guys to access months and months later. Um, somebody said, what kind of wood do I use? This type of wood is called MDF. It's really hard, really smooth, and really dense. And it's a little heavier than like the plywood underlayment. On my resource list, I have plywood underlayment linked on there because if you're jigsawing and cutting your own, that plywood underlayment's cheaper than MDF. But if you want to spend a little bit more, this MDF cuts like butter. But it's hard to find. If you, if you have a Home Depot in your area, I believe they have quarter inch MDF. Now this one's been laser cut. That's why it's black on the edge. But um, I, I've been told by all the girls that that quarter inch MDF cuts like butter. It's awesome. And it's less sanding too and less splintering. But if you want to save a little money and you can find it, the quarter inch MD, uh, plywood underlayment at Lowe's is what I use. Or what I've used for years when I was jigsawing. Um, what does your shirt say? Bless your pea picking heart. <laughs> That's what it says. Uh <laughs> You may have already addressed all these brush. Oh yeah, I already answered that. Do you ever thin your paint out? No, um, I don't. I only ever like I don't know. I only ever do if it seems really thick. But I've never had. I've never gotten paint from like this from Walmart that was thick. I've gotten it before where it was really super thin and it was ridiculously thin. So I've had to throw it out before. That's frustrating. But it seems to happen if the paint gets really hot, like in my car or something. What type of paint? I already answered that. Do I homeschool? No. <laughs> uh, Libby says, do paint club members receive a discount on blank door hangers and stencils for those members who don't cut their own? Okay. Um, right now, Libby, we are not offering any discounts on stencils that have been cut by me and mailed by me. And the reason for that is, is because it takes forever for me to cut even just one stencil on my Cricut. And so I don't, if I started offering discounts for the stencils, I would suddenly be doing nothing but cutting stencils all day, every day. So no, I actually encourage you if you don't, and you know what, like the stencils that I sell, the biggest full size stencils like these, let me hold one up for comparison. These biggest full size stencils can be used a thousand bajillion times and they're $25, that's shipping included. Uh, I feel like they're worth that, but if you plan on buying a bunch of stencils in your future, just buy a Cricut, honestly. You can get a Cricut for $200, which is also equal to buying, what, eight of these stencils? So you might as well buy the Cricut and learn how to cut them yourself, because then you could cut endless amounts. You could even start selling the stencils yourself if you wanted to. Um, but yes, we do offer a discount on the cutout. The, the blank cutouts that are that for that current month. Not on just any blank cutouts, but on the ones that we're going to be painting that month. If you wanted to order the birdhouse we're going to be painting, you could pay $22. That includes shipping. If you wanted the birdhouse and the bicycle that we're going to be painting in April, you can pay $35 and you will get both shipped to you. That includes shipping. So each month you will have the option to buy the blank cutouts at an additional cost. $22 for one, $35 for both. Um, Melissa, I'm from Benton, Kentucky. Uh, let's see. Would you mind? Oh, I already answered that. Do you have a Cricut to use the 
do you have to have a Cricut to use the free patterns? Only if you're cutting stencils. If you're just printing out like this, the templates that we give out, they just print out on regular old printer paper like this. And they come with, this one has like seven sheets to it. And so you print it out and it'll be like a puzzle and you'll lay it out and put the puzzle together and then tape it together. So you don't have to have a Cricut for that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it is a big stamp. <laughs> uh, hey, Michelle, I just now saw your comment. Uh, Michelle, my stamp came from Zazzle.com. Z-A-Z-Z-L-E. Yes, Susan, somebody lo local is now laser cutting all of my stuff for me. Um, yes, I'm dipping my brush, Randy, straight down into that puddle. And uh, it gathers up plenty of paint when I do it like that. So that's the way I, I don't ever scrape all the excess paint off of it. Sherry says, Home Depot has their eight. Oh, good. yes, this is good news. I was really tempted to go on their website and buy a bunch. Home Depot's website, Sherry is telling us, has their bare, eight ounce bare samples for 99 cents. If you want to know how much eight ounces is, this is eight ounces in this. They come in like little pots, though. They're like shorter. But this at Walmart costs me $2.50. So Bear is selling their good, like, I think it's latex paint, though. But it's $0.99 cents for this much paint instead of two fifty dollars like I pay at Walmart. So I'm really tempted to go on there and buy it. The only thing is, is I would probably have to put it in a different container because these, these are good for paint parties, but those little pots of paint would be difficult for people to pour the paint out of. And you can get them on the website. Um, Home Depot, Teresa says, Home Depot has the quarter inch MDF in two foot by two foot pieces. They only carry, okay, so you have to buy them in smaller sizes. That's, that's the thing too, is I like buying the, the plywood underlayment in eight foot by four foot sheets. And so I can get like 12 door hangers out of a big sheet like that. And it's a lot more cost effective because those big sheets are about $14. Um, what kind of material do you use in the stencil, says Patricia. I have that linked on my resource list as well. It's called Mylar, plastic Mylar. It's uh, Go to southernadornmentsdecor.com, click on resource list at the top of the page. Will the Cricut would you use? I don't understand, Denise. You may have to re rephrase your question. <laughs> you can't cut wood with the Cricut, not, not this kind of wood. Uh, yes, the birch plywood is easy to paint on. Jan says, I've seen crickets at Bargain Hunt. We don't have a Bargain Hunt. That's a good deal. For $159 to $179, that is a steal. No, the, the cricket will not cut the wood that I use. What type of material? I already answered that. Uh, Melissa says, thank you. How much to put the template together? Oh, yes. Melissa, yes. I had kind of shown in the Painter's Clubhouse how to put these templates together that you print out. And I gave like a little demonstration. And she, I think she said she cut hers out and then traced it over onto poster board so that it's more durable because these little copy paper templates aren't very durable. Amy says, how do you use a stencil without paint getting under it? I try to pounce the paint on and not brush it. Um, I do pounce it on. I just pounce up and down with a little bitty sponge pouncer like one of these. And, um, you know, just make sure you do it like in thin coats. Like don't go, don't like, I always scrape the excess off the end of my sponge pouncer. And I actually, this morning when I did the stencil for the Chevron on this recorded myself doing it in like a little eight minute video showing how to use the stencil and in the best way to not get paint underneath the stencil. So if you're in the clubhouse, that video is going to be coming your way very soon because I recorded that just, uh, this morning. Teresa said, I just ordered a bunch of the samples. I guess she means from Home Depot. Menards has quarter inch MDF. Awesome. We don't have a Menards around here. Uh, Patricia says, I bought the Mylar to cut the stencils. Uh, what settings do you use? Now, I have a Cricut. I use the deep cut blade. I dial it up like on top of the little blade. There's um, a dial. I dial it all the way to six, which I guess means it's cutting the deepest. And then, like, I have the old Cricut. So, on the side of my Cricut, there's a little dial, and I dial it up to the max pressure setting. And then, on my, I have SCAL, you know, Sure Cuts A Lot program. In my program, it has the option to multi-cut. So, if my blade's fairly new, I multi-cut twice. If my blade's kind of dull, I multi-cut three times. So, that's why sometimes it takes forever to cut these stencils out, is because the Cricut has to go over that pattern two to three times before it's completely done cutting out. Well, Athena said, I just cut out the watering can today. I can't wait to paint it. That's awesome. Um, 
Oh, and Melissa said she got her Cricut for like $200 at Walmart, so there you go. I don't know. Uh, I think the Cricuts are on sale at Joann's, or they were, but I don't know if that comes with extra goodies. Nikki says, how do I get in the clubhouse? Comment me right here in the comments, and it will send you a direct link to your messenger for the website. Yeah, no Menards here either, Sherry. <laughs> I think I've finally caught up with everybody's comments. So, um, my kids sound like they're tearing the house apart in there, so I better get back in there pretty soon. But if you guys have any more questions about the Painter's Clubhouse, feel free to send me a private message, and um, I will get all your questions answered. It's $27 a month. And um, you can sign up for a whole year if you want to for two ninety seven, and that gets you one month for free. Okay, Lori said, how do you use the drop box patterns? I'm trying to cut the birdhouse pattern as separate pieces. Should it all be one piece? Um, if you print it out on paper, like if you're printing, I'm not sure I understand, but if you print it out, you can tape it all together like this. And then you would cut out the outside of the pattern. All of these are extra pieces to like trace and stuff later. So I hope that answers your question. I don't know. But as far as Dropbox goes, that's what I'm using right now inside the group to give you guys the files and things because we're still working on polishing up the website. But eventually, all of this stuff will be easily downloadable from your membership area in the website. So you won't have to mess with Dropbox much longer. Hannah, my assistant's working on that. So we'll get it going soon. All right. Um... Ginger said, I just got on here, and if I don't ask now, I'll forget. Okay, I'll wait for you to answer before I get off, or ask your question before I get off here. <laughs> oh, just a reminder, though, if you don't sign up this go-round, like, because it ends April the 9th, if you don't you sign up this go-round, it's not going to open up again for new members until July, the July 2018. And so then the price is not going to be $27 anymore. The new price will be $37 a month. So if you want to lock in your price of $27, you got to sign up now. That way you won't ever pay more than that. Ginger says, what do you do using a sander? I use a, it's also overlinked on that resource list, but it's a Skill, S-K-I-L, sander. It's like one of those little mouse sanders. It's kind of triangular shaped, and it has the little Velcro peel-off sanding papers. And I also have the sanding pads linked on there as well. So you can get the sander and the sanding pads on my resource list. Um, I use the 80 grit sandpaper. So uh, whenever I do my jigsaw tutorial, I do plan on like showing you how to sand them as well. That will be part of the tutorial. So fingers crossed. Hopefully it doesn't snow this weekend because Kentucky weather's crazy. And we can get that jigsaw tutorial recorded for you this weekend. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful Thursday evening. We're going to play cards and have friends over tonight since it's spring break. And uh, I will see you guys again tomorrow. Oh, wait. Leticia says, do you prime? No, I never prime anything. Unless I'm painting with like a bright yellow color in one of these paints. There is a bright yellow in Apple Barrel. I don't have it sitting up here. I will paint white behind that bright yellow so it will be bright. Otherwise, you'll be able to see the wood grain behind it. Where are the patterns for the birdhouse and the bicycle? Lisa, they are linked in a pinned post at the top of the group. If you're on your mobile phone, it's kind of hard to see the pinned post. So at the very top of the group page, look for the words, view pinned post, and click that, and it will bring up that post. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.